Can you airbrush with acrylics? Well, of course you can. So I'm gonna show you how and just how easy it is. There's a whole lot of little bits and pieces to talk about, so let's get started. So we'll talk about the airbrushes themselves in a second, but the first thing we need to look at is obviously the paint we're going to put through it, or the ink. Now, if you were to just use watercolor mixed down with water, or an ink, be it an alcohol ink, or better still, if you want permanency, uh, an acrylic ink, then that's fine. Matisse inks will go straight through it. We'll do that in a second. So I'm going to try the Matisse ink through my uh, double action airbrush, dropping a bit of ink in there. So a couple of things, if you've done any airbrushing, you'll know this, but in a twin action, double action um, airbrush, uh, one dimension will be um, the adjustment of the air. So in this case, it's just up and down. Uh, my other airbrush here, it's actually backwards and then down. Some uh, airbrushes, all airbrushes, uh, airbrushes can be slightly different. Uh, but the one thing to note is when we're going down, there's no ink coming out. And then as I pull back, so there's no ink. And then as I pull back, I'll get a little bit more ink and more and more. And there we go. And just get the flow happening. Um, one thing to watch, just a little tip, which once again, you're probably aware of, is you need to keep it so you don't get dumbbells. So this is what I mean by dumbbells, where you start and stop, ending up with a big blob. You, you want to keep the air on, move, and then discontinue the ink coming through while the airbrush is still moving. So that's, that's all pretty simple. I've got, still got a bit of air in there where I shook the, uh, the ink up before and that's why we're getting a little bit of sputtering and spurting. But basically, this, this should just keep going all day. It won't be a problem because that's a, an ink. Um, it's very thin to begin with. But if you want some opacity or if you want to use some thick acrylics, you might have a whole range of acrylics and you want to add uh, or, or use airbrush with some thick acrylics, that's where the next section will come into its own. But before we start that, I'm going to clean my airbrush out so that the ink doesn't dry in it and make it much harder to clean out later. So the first thing to do, wash out the container that the ink was in. Sometimes this might be a bottle if it's, if it's fed from the bottom. Um, as in this one, there's a little reservoir in the top. Um, so yeah, a lot of airbrushes are, are different. Now, if you don't have good ventilation, it's a good idea to wear a mask when you're spraying anything because anything other than clean air is really not something that you want to be breathing. At the end of your session, you're best to actually pull your airbrush apart and clean it thoroughly, but we're about to put some more paint through it, so okay, that's pretty good. All right, so the next thing we're going to try and do is actually try some thicker paints. So I guess the first one you would then, if you were choosing paints just to airbrush with, the first one you would use would be fluids because they're really thin. I'm not gonna bother putting those through because they will actually go through, most colors will go straight through an airbrush. You might need to thin them slightly. I'm gonna jump straight through to structure. So this is about the thickest paint that you're likely to get. I'm just gonna mix a, a little bit up here. So as you can see, really quite thick and buttery. This is not gonna go through the airbrush or it's really gonna struggle going through the airbrush. So yes, we can just take a little bit of water and mix it in until we get a nice thin consistency and that will go through the airbrush. But the problem is we will have added so much water 
that the paint is really going to be quite thin. The viscosity that we're mixing to is probably about something like milk. So it has to be really quite runny to actually go through the airbrush. The particle sizes of the pigment are all small enough to go through the, through the airbrush, although we will talk about that in a sec because you can actually get clumping uh, of the pigments and, and uh, I'll show you how to avoid that. So I've just mixed water in. We're gonna try that through the airbrush and it'll go through, but it's not gonna be that smooth. So you can see it's really, it's not actually that smooth. I think I've probably run out of color there. We'll just try a little bit more. And, and the color's pretty washed out as well because we've had to add so much water. Okay, so once again, I'm just gonna wash that out. So now we've cleaned the brush again. What I'm gonna do is show you how to thin any acrylic paint down to go through an airbrush to get the full intensity of the color. So as much color as you can get, in other words, thinning it down as little as possible. And the main medium we're going to use there is called surface tension breaker. This is an airbrush and watercolor medium. What it does is two main things. Well, one main thing. It breaks the surface tension of the particles within the paint. What that means in English is that all the pigments will tend to want to clump together. When they're clumped together, they're not gonna go through the airbrush. It's fine if we've got a really thick paint, that's actually not a bad thing particularly. But when we're trying to achieve a really thin flowing paint, we need all the pigment particles to spread apart. The surface tension breaker does that, plus it helps thin the whole viscosity of the paint without adding as much water. It does those two things, and that's really the main point of airbrush medium. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the same paint, but we're going to just add a few drops. Now there's a recipe at the bottom in the description, but a few drops of the acrylic painting medium, and almost instantly, we could, we could airbrush with that. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to thin it down. So we've probably got a little bit more water than airbrush medium. And the airbrush medium is probably running at about 5% or so. I'll just show you what that looks like through the airbrush. So the surface tension breaker will give a much more intensity just because you're putting less water in with it than what you would if you were just mixing the paint down with water. Now, this is where if you're going to do a lot of airbrushing, what uh, the other mediums you might want to look at depending on your climate and your application, okay? So the first one is the drying retarder. And there's notes down the bottom of the, uh, in the description about each one of these mediums. But uh, a lot of airbrush artists will actually mix up their own mix, which will be a combination of several of the mediums and a bit of water, and they just add that into each color that they're trying to mix down with. So you'd use drying retarder to slow the drying time, to slow the drying in the tip. So obviously if it's a really dry climate in, you're in or really hot, or you're just finding that the, uh, your mix, the color is, is drying in the tip too often. The other thing, um, if you're doing work that needs to remain water fast, acrylics are normally wash fast or water fast. If you keep adding water to the mix, then your mix will become water sensitive and so therefore your resultant coating will be water sensitive. If you want to make sure that doesn't happen, acrylic painting medium is as thin as water, but it's about 40% solids of binder. This will increase the binding capacity. And last one is the matte medium. If you've increased the binding capacity and that's what you wanna do, 
What the binder also does is impart a glossiness or a, a higher sheen. And if the rest of your work um, does not have that high sheen, then you might want to use a matte medium, add it in with your mix to kill off that sheen, okay? And which ratios, we've got some examples below, but it's really up to what you're trying to actually achieve with your end result. So mix up any or all of these mediums to make your own personalized airbrush medium. A little tip, if you've got more than about 40% water in there and you haven't used distilled water, which is fair enough, add a couple of drops of disinfectant so that the water, if you've got it out of the tap or it's town water um, and it's not necessarily particularly clean, so that it doesn't go smelly if you're going to hang on to it for a while. So hopefully I've answered all your questions about airbrushing with acrylics. If I haven't, then make sure you give us an email. And if I have, then how about you like, subscribe?